You're listening to the Matt Laner Podcast. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed on iTunes so that you can catch every new episode as they get dropped to your feed. While you're at it, make sure you leave your comment to this podcast below so that I can tailor my messages to your request. And with that, let's get started. You must be the person before you can become the person. You gotta have that mindset of working on your game like your life depends on, because it does. Your mindset, your perspective, the way you approach setbacks will determine how far you get in this game. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Matt Later Podcast. It's been quite a while since we've done our last episode. I think actually probably a year, close to a year now. Um, I've been up to a lot, having my first year under the semi-pro basketball leagues here in the U.S., uh, training jobs. I have a lot of knowledge I've accumulated for you guys that I want to bring back to you and share with you. Um, so I think we should get right into it today. Today I'm going to be talking about your habits, building your basketball habits and building your discipline. Now discipline is basically doing what you need to do when you need to do it, whether you feel like it or not. This is something we've touched on in the past, but today I really want to delve more deeply into it and give you a prescription of habits that I think are important for you as a basketball player. So when you're building your habits, the key is to take it slow. You can't start adding in you know five different things at once and expect it to stick you might be able to do it for a day or two for a week but eventually you're gonna fail you're gonna mess up life's gonna get in the way and inevitably you're not gonna be consistent and that's the key with this that's the key with anything consistency so the, the key to building your habits is to add one new habit per month it takes on average about 21 days for you to actually build a habit. So doing one per month, you know, allows a little extra time to really ingrain that habit, ingrain it into your day-to-day -day life and make sure it sticks. Now the key with habits is you want to have a cue. You want to have a lead-in, something that leads you into the habit that you're doing. The typical one is the, you know, an alarm clock. Your alarm glows off in the morning and then you start whatever habit it, it is right after that. Now it doesn't have to be in the morning, but the typical cue that I'm going to recommend for you is an alarm. Set an alarm for whatever your habit is, you do the habit, and then after you execute the habit, you give yourself a small reward. Now the reward, you want to make sure that it's not you know a big thing, but it's something that will basically allow you to look forward to the habit, because you know there's a reward afterwards. So you know a typical reward would be maybe some sort of healthy food again you don't want to make it something like eating chocolate bars or pizza because that's obviously not going to help you as a basketball player but something that you can look forward to and something that's going to also help you reach your ultimate goals as well you know food is a typical one but it could be anything it could be doing something that you enjoy doing um, but again don't make it a big thing because you want to make sure that your focus is the habit itself. So that's the prescription for all these habits. You wanna have a cue, the one I'm gonna recommend is an alarm. You execute your habit, and then once you've done the habit, you get your small reward. Now I'm gonna list a few habits for you guys that I think are very important that you start ingraining as a basketball player. And I'm gonna list them in order of importance, the way I see it, and the way I'd recommend for you guys to add these habits into your day-to-day -day life. The first one is training. Obviously, as a basketball player, if you're not training, you're not executing your workouts, you're not getting better, you know, what are you doing, essentially? That's the most important habit as a basketball player is to train, improve, to play, to do the actual basketball skills and habits. Um, now, the key with this one is, is you want to schedule your workouts out the week before you do them. So typically, the way I do it is on Sunday night, Whatever program you're following, whatever workouts you, you have for that week, you schedule them out, where you're going to do them, what time you're going to do them, 
and then I set alarms to go off about 30 minutes before the workout for each one of those. That way, you know, the alarm goes off on that day, you have the workout listed, you know what to do, you know where to do it, and you go and execute. Um, and another thing with the training habit that I recommend is you do your foam rolling before your workout. So, you know, your alarm goes off, you go to the gym, you can even do it at home if you want to, foam roll, and then you execute your actual workout, and then after your workout, you stretch from head to toe, foam roll head to toe, and then you get your reward. That's the most important fundamental habit is your training. You may need to make sure you're getting your training in. Foam rolling and stretching is vital as well, so that's basically a part of your training. But I just like to mention that because not every program is going to have foam rolling and stretching listed. So you just want to make sure that you start ingraining the habit of having foam rolling and stretching in your actual workout because those things are fundamental. They're going to keep your body functioning properly and you need to make sure you're doing them. The next habit that I'm going to recommend for you is sleeping. We've talked about it before in, on the recovery podcast that sleeping is vital for you as a basketball player. You need to make sure that you're sleeping approximately nine hours per night. Now I know this is difficult to do. It's not something that you can do every single night. But more nights than not, you need to make sure that you're sleeping nine hours per night, preferably from 10 to 7. That's kind of the ideal time to be sleeping. Again, I know this doesn't happen all the time. So on the nights that you don't get nine hours per sleep, and in general, you should be sleeping in 90-minute cycles. So this could be like three hours, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, ten and a half, twelve. You want to make sure your sleep cycles are about 90 minutes because that's the typical range of a sleep cycle. So you want to be making sure you set your alarm for some range of 90. This will make sure that when you wake up, you're not waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle and then you feel, you know, groggy the whole day. You know, that's why, because you're waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle. So you want to set your alarm for some form of 90 minutes. And then the, whatever number of cycles you missed at night, like I said, you're, you're aiming for nine hours per night. Say you sleep six hours. For me personally, I sleep about six hours a night during the week. I do try to sleep in on the weekends. But during the week, I average about six hours. So what I recommend, for example, if you sleep six hours, obviously that's two 90-minute cycles away from 90. So I would take two naps during the day. However many 90-minute cycles you're short of the nine hours per night, you want to sleep that number, have that number of naps the next day. So if you sleep six hours, you take two naps. If you sleep seven and a half, you take one nap. If you sleep four and a half, you take three naps. I probably wouldn't recommend going any lower than that. It's something you can experiment with. I personally wouldn't even recommend going below six hours a night, if at all possible. You know, six hours a night and two naps during the day is definitely something that will allow you to still be um, productive during your day. But for me personally, anything less than that, you know, is kind of still difficult to do. Um, but ideally, you know, seven and a half, nine hours is even better if you can manage it. Um, but again, however many cycles of 90 minutes you miss at night, you take that number of naps during the day. The next habit is your diet, the foods you're eating. We've talked about this again before on a different podcast, but in general, you want to be eating five to six meals per day. You need to be drinking at least four liters of water per day if you're training intensely as an athlete, as a basketball player. And you need to make sure that your meals are whole foods. You want to stay away from processed foods, natural foods that occur in nature, fruits, vegetables, meats, um, you know, dairy you can get away with for some people, just foods that are naturally occurring in nature. You want to eat those and stay away from processed foods. And a key with this is you need to cook your meals in advance. What I like to do is cook, you know, my main meals on Sunday. And then usually around Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll cook them again for the rest of the week. So I'll go shopping, buy whatever I want to make, and then cook it for those next days, like two or three days. That's what I'm going to recommend to you. It's probably going to be about twice a week where you're going to have to cook meals. You don't want to be cooking them as you eat them because, let's be honest, how, much, how many of us actually have time to do that every day? So cook quite a few meals in advance, prepare them ahead of time, take them with you, makes it that much easier to ingrain the, the habit of eating whole foods into your day-to-day -day life. The last habit that I'm going to recommend that you guys add to your rituals is taking a contrast shower or an ice bath. 
Um, for those of you who don't know what these are, a contrast shower is basically you go into the shower, put it on hot for any length of time, I'm going to recommend a minute, and then right after that you switch to cold for a minute, and you do that for at least 10 minutes. You do this after your workouts, and then after any time you play, especially full court, so you know games, scrimmages, and practice, just going to the court and having fun with your friends if you're playing full court basketball especially, take an ice bath. You fill the tub with cold water, dump in as much ice really as you possibly can, and you sit in it from all the way up to your nipple line for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes. You do these two things, it's really going to improve your recovery ability dramatically. Again, you do this, I recommend, after your workouts, or at least when you, you know get home from your workouts. If you're doing two workouts a day, do it after your last workout, whatever your last workout is for the day. So I'd recommend, again, at this point, this would be the fourth habit, so this would be your fourth month. You know, you're training, you have your training in, you do your foam rolling before your training, you train, you stretch, then you come home, you do your uh, contrast shower or ice bath, and then you eat a meal after that of whole foods. That would be, you know, a great little ritual right there for you. But again, this is your fourth month, and you're adding one of these habits per month. So the first habit is your training. You do that on your first month. The second month is your sleeping nine hours per night and taking naps for however many cycles, 90 minutes you missed at night. Your third month would be your diet of whole foods, five to six meals per day, four liters of water per day, and then make sure you're cooking them in advance. And then the last habit I'm going to recommend for you is your contrast showers after your own workouts and then an ice bath after any time you play. So again, those are the four habits I recommend to you as a basketball player. Make sure you take it slow. Don't try to rush this. It's a process. If you try to do it all at once, you're probably not going to make it happen. Again, we're building our discipline here. All these habits are building your discipline. Building your discipline with these habits is the most important thing you're going to do in your career. Again, how are you going to, going to be able to show up to practice, do the things you need to do in life if you don't have the discipline within yourself, within the own things that you're trying to achieve in your goals? If you can't do those things so remember it's a slow process one step at a time and maybe later in a different podcast we can get into some more advanced habits that you guys can add but for now stick with those four habits four months and you will completely change your career and your life